Hi everyone, I'm talking today a little bit about GoGuardian and specifically how to use scenes for GoGuardian. Um, if you haven't used GoGuardian before, it's actually a really easy tool. I hadn't used it all year until second semester when I realized I'm giving work time and every time I walk away from my students, they're like on different tabs and things like that. So I started using this to help kind of boost my own classroom management, but it also freed me up from having to, like the scene aspect of this, creating scenes helped free me up from having to sit and monitor a lot on GoGuardian. Instead, I can be walking around more so than staring and watching to make sure no one's jumping to tabs they're not supposed to be on. Um, so this is like the homepage of GoGuardian. If you are new to GoGuardian and have not created anything, um, I think the school autom automatically creates your own. So you can go to pending. I declined all my pending because I didn't know they're there before I made them. Um, easiest way I honestly think is just going through and importing through Google Classroom. If you do that, it'll ask you to connect um, and log in. Um, but then you just like click the class that you want to create. So we'll just use my advisory as an example. Um, and I go down and hit import class and it just creates it. So it pulled all my students from that Google Classroom um, there, and then it is now part of my classroom page. It's right here on the front. Um, so that's just really easy. I think importing from Google Classroom is pretty convenient, uh, but it just grabs and pulls all of your kids into one um, and then gives you this to work with here. Um, so for scenes, scenes are a really awesome way if you are looking for um, a way to, to like, monitor sessions when you're using GoGuardian. Um, you can create allowed websites, but also a blocked websites scene. Um, so I'll kind of explain what those are. So an allowed website are websites that the students can only access um, on that list when you make that list. So if you're trying to say like, I want to keep them only in Google Classroom, if we're doing like my first one here is Google Classroom work time. So the only thing they have access to are the ones I approved. They cannot get on any other tabs. They can't even get into regular Google search. Um, and so, yeah, if they just try to switch tabs and search something in Google, it's not gonna let them do that. Um, and I use this if I'm doing like, you know, classwork um, that only requires them to be reading something on Google Classroom, or maybe they're reflecting or they're whatever it is. Um, if it's just, I know they don't have to leave Google Classroom and Google Docs or any other Google product. <laughs> um, this is a great one that I put on so then I don't have to worry if kids are, you know, putting together puzzles on another screen or whatever it is they're doing. So over here I've got, you know, I've got Google Accounts login, I've got Classroom Docs, Drive, Google Slides, and just the account login screen because that's a pop-up, so it'll try and block that. So that's it, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But um, another one is YouTube. I also allowed access to that because I do know there are times where I have them watch something and then reflect. Um, so you can create scenes specifically for tasks, um, which is really nice. Um, a blocked website list, so like students may have access to anything and everything, um, but you can also just create a scene. I usually, I just started with two things. I put YouTube on there um, and I put, of all things, Facebook Marketplace on there because, and Facebook in general, um, but specifically Marketplace because I had, one day I was walking around class and I had kids looking at truck parts on Facebook Marketplace and I was like, it was driving me nuts. So I was like, Facebook's gone, we're done. Um, you need to be writing your essays. So um, with this one I have, it just says the title of it is Please Stay on Task. And right now I have these three things blocked um, because they're the things that keep popping up. Um, so I've got YouTube, I've got Facebook, and I've got Cool Math Games blocked. Um, this one's nice if I if I don't need to restrict them or keep them in a certain place. I can just put that running. And then when I do notice that kids maybe are, I don't know, getting on their Minecraft game that they all figured out how to get, I can easily just add that to the list of blocked sites for my session and it'll keep them from getting on that. Um, so I just kind of, you know, I am kind of creating that. You can also within scenes create a limit for tabs on how many tabs they can have open at once, um, things like that. So that's, that's like what kind of like those two different sides, an allowed website list and a blocked website list. Um, I'll show you how to create um, on either side of these. We'll, we'll make an allowed website list first. Um, so if I create this list, um, maybe I need to make a new one. Maybe um, we're doing specific things on Google Classroom again. Um, so you start by giving it a name. Um, so there, I'll just use Google Classroom, work time, or work because I think that's my other one's name, work time. Um, you can add a description, you don't have to. I like to put jokes in there because I know how much they don't like it when you get on GoGuardian. Um, so I try and lighten things up with a little punny joke. We'll see if, you know, some of them laugh, some of them just don't even care, but you know, it's fun for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, you assign it a color, uh, just so you know, like, I don't know, it just kind of highlights your scene for you. 
Um, then you're going to hit next up in the corner. So then this is the important screen where you can, and you can always come back and manage the lists that you've already created. Um, so I can go up here and, and it's just going to ask you to search keywords, websites that you want to allow to click um, and then click search. So I want Google Classroom because um, that's and the site they're absolutely going to have to access. Um, so the first one, I would look at the URL because like definitely along here, sometimes they get kind of crunched and don't look quite right. So look at their URL too. Um, but this one's cl googleclassroom.com. So I'm going to add that one. The new feature that they added, which I really enjoy is that and appreciate is this one. So like if you add Google accounts, it's going to say students may be redirected to additional websites when they go to this website, um, add it to your scene. We recommend adding the this to ensure student success. So it gives you like, this is like when they go to log in, maybe they've been logged out of their Google account and it makes them log back in um, to access Google Classroom. That theoretically would have been blocked. So it's giving me, um, when I'm adding certain sites, it's like, hey, you might also wanna add this so they don't get locked out. Um, and then I go through, um, if I'm doing Google Classroom work, I probably also want them to have access to Google Docs. Um, this is the straight up Google, so they can have access to it, but it would also restrict them. They can, <laughs> they can have that access, but as soon as they search like, whatever they're searching, it's going to block the next screen. So I don't even bother. Um, I add Google Drive. Um, and I usually add Google Slides, which I don't see it on there. Um, and yeah, it's not popping up like it should. I don't know where that one went to. Um, but yeah, so I try and add all the Google um, products to see if I can get those all in there. Well, Google Slides is MIA right now. Um, might be on the next page. Check it out. Um, oh, here's like Google Sites. There it is, the Google Slides. Um, so Google Forms they might need. So sometimes like it's weird, even though I Google search that, you might have to go down here and click between all of the ones they've found. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, but there's all my sites maybe that I'm looking for or that I want. Um, again, I also usually throw YouTube in there just in case. Um, when I've done figuring out all the things I want, I hit save and there's my scene. It's gonna be down here at the bottom of my list. Here's my Google Work Time. Um, these three were examples that I've used for other people. Um, but yeah, so this is now there. So to activate a scene and to put it live, um, I'm trying to be very careful about this because it will be fine. Um, so if I'm trying to create a scene and use that scene, um, I'm going to need to start one of my classes. There are quick ways to do this. Um, I usually like, it's kind of showing here. Um, we've got like, you can just hit start class and it'll just launch everything. So I might do that just really quick um, to show you. And so we'll use my, we'll use my six period. So I'm gonna hit start class. That's gonna, it will notify them. They'll know when you do log into it. If you hit that, it'll just kind of start launching things. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's loading. Some people probably don't have, um, like connection right now. Um, actually, this would be a perfect time for someone to use Go Guardian because we got one person on <laughs> watching soccer. We got some puzzlers. Um, got some people doing their work. Um, but if you ever need to, like, so if you go in this way, you can apply a scene by going into this right hand corner. You hit no scene applied, and then you can choose which scene you would like. Um, and for this instance, I am going to use my my blocked websites list because I know they're all working on different things right now and I I really don't want to mess them all up if that's a thing um, since they're working in other classes but we'll use the stay on task if I hit stay on task uh, the scene updates and it'll say please stay on task and then it'll start blocking people um, based on what they're doing so I've got someone playing a gim kit if I wanted to I could go into here and it'll give me kind of their list here if there's additional things you don't want them to have access to and you notice that they're using it, um, you can go over here to block for this class. This is what comes up for any scene you have on. So you can add that. If you click this button, it's going to prompt you and say block site or block page. Um, and once you select what you want to block, it will bring up a, a message that says, are you sure you want to do this? Confirm that. And you'll hit update scene and it will update that scene and block them and kick them out of it right away. So that's one way you can add a scene. The other convenient way, if you want to start your scene right away without having that be a problem, um, you click, don't click start class, just click the box itself. This pops up with, um, this is my kind of dashboard for all the sessions I've used um, there. Uh, and so over here, uh, I can tell when is it going to be over. I usually set it for the last, like this is eighth period, so my time is set for 3.30 p.m. So every time I don't have to keep going in and changing it. Um, and then it asks you to apply a scene. 
Um, again, I might just, I'm just going to use um, the please stay on task one, which is the one of like, you can access everything, but the ones I, I've told you, um, if I hit start session, it's going to activate that for all my students. Um, so then it, here it says up here, there seems to be a conflict with the scene applied to your students, uh, meaning somebody had a blocked site up on their computer already before I opened that. So they could have been on, you know, one of the three things I think on there is YouTube, cool math games and Facebook marketplace. So somebody was on something they weren't supposed to be on there. Um, and so it, it'll warn you like, hey, this might interfere with what people are doing um, if you have something on there that's blocked. At any time, again, you can click into what students are working on. And if they're on something you don't want them to be on, you can always block it for class. You can also see all of their tabs that are open and choose to close any tab that you do not want them to have on in general. Um, yeah, so th that's just kind of one function there um, overall. We'll end that session so they will stop panicking that their English teacher is now putting that on. <laughs> um, so that's just a quick run through. Again, those scenes are super helpful because I feel like I don't have to sit here and watch the screen. I mean, the dashboard's nice because I can see at a quick glance what everybody's on and then click in to get more of a view. So again, like if I... I'm just gonna, you know, start this class really quick. I know everyone's gonna be like, what the heck is Ms. Bedard doing? Um, if I'm doing this, like I can click in and see exactly what they're working on um, during that time. And I can see all the different like tabs they have open. Um, for instance, also other features that I think are nice, you can choose to open tabs for them. Um, you can lock their device, you can screenshot what they're doing. Um, you can also annotate. Um, opening a new tab, you just copy and paste the link you want them to be on in there. Um, you can chat. So if you need to tell them something and you don't wanna like cause a scene, um, you can call, you can message out to them um, and things like that. So a lot of nice functions of, of like, you know, I thought, I don't know, I've, I always thought that GoGuardian was going to be really, like, make me struggle, and I'd have to sit here and stare. I'm like, I don't want to sit here and stare at my computer screen the whole time. Um, but what's really nice is it doesn't, like, these scenes allow you to have that freedom of, you know, instead of having to worry about what they're doing on their computer, you can worry about them and their learning instead of just trying to keep them off all the things they're not supposed to be on. Um, kids will always grumble when you put it on, but it's also like, hey, it's okay. You know, we're just, we're prioritizing learning right now and it'll be okay. Um, but yeah, so I really highly suggest this new blocked website list is starting to become one of my favorite things. You can see I have like multiple times over here. Like I use one for Google Class Time work. I do use it for assessments. So you can use it for like certain activities. Maybe they're only supposed to be on Wii Video during a time session and maybe they need access to like their, their like I think this one has access to Gmail. They're, they're, their accounts um, because they needed to get some like pictures from their email that they were sending themselves. Um, but yeah, you can just like create scenes for certain assignments. So maybe you only, you know, maybe you're doing a web quest on a day and you only need them to access the sites that are on your web quest. You just add a scene, you know, put, you know, like I did a web quest the other day um, that was like tech theater and I could put all of those links to all the videos and all the things. And that's the only thing they can access. So they're web questing, but they're directed they're guided so they're not getting off task and we know the attention spans wander and attention spans are kind of you know we're struggling with that i think um, with our students and we notice that so this can maybe help kind of keep them on track there um, but that block website license is nice because i can just activate that all the time and know that hey they can't get on those sites that i don't want them to be on um, and i can always keep adding to it too and i tell them that too i'm like if i see you on that site again it's going on the block list and they're like okay no i'm sorry i won't do it um so that's just one way i've used um you know, Google, or excuse me, um, Go Guardian scenes. Um, I use them for assessment taking on Google Classroom. If we have an assessment there, it locks them into that. Um, Cause I know you can only lock Chromebooks when it's a Google form, but I don't use Google forms for assessments cause I got to do a lot of writing. Um, so I, I use Google or Go Guardian for that. I use it for work time. I use it for we video work time. I use it for, you know, whatever, um, all those different types of assignments or activities. Um, but I also have one that just helps me manage and keep like, it just helps me feel less stressed about what my students are working on. And it gives me an opportunity to sit down more and actually work with my students on what they need instead of managing behavior um, there. So if you have questions about GoGuardian scenes or GoGuardian in general, it's my new favorite thing. Um, there's so many different cool things and you can look at student reports. You can look at, you know, different classrooms um, and I can see on a certain day how that went and it gives you all the fancy timelines of how they, they did and what time they were working on things or whatever. Um, and so, so yeah, great things all around. But if you have questions on Google, on 
excuse me, uh, if you have questions about GoGuardian or GoGuardian scenes in particular, um, please come and see me. I'd love to talk through them and help you get one set up and, and teach you all the fun things about it. Um, but yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your day.